Today I'm trying an abstract painting technique that I've never tried before. It's a first for me, it looks really interesting, but it breaks all the rules, all the rules that I've read about and known, so I'm very intrigued. It looks, the result that I've seen looks beautiful. A lot of artists uh, that I've seen use this technique. I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I'm taking, what I'm doing, how it feels. At the end, we'll see the final result and I'm gonna talk you through my thoughts once it's all dried and my experience. Let's do it. I'm working on a large canvas. It's a 24 by 30 gallery, so it's a thick border. I love those. It's a regular store-bought canvas that is pre-primed with gesso. And the first technique that I'm using is acrylic pores, but not the pores that you've heard about where you see um, beautiful swirls of a bunch of thick pigment saturating the canvas and tilting it to create patterns moving around like a thick layer. It's not those. It's a very liquidy, very liquidy version of an acrylic paint and saturating the canvas with water, creating puddles, moving the puddles around and it creates the effect of watercolors with transparencies and variations of opacity colors melding together but only with a super diluted acrylic paint i'll start with this green it's very liquidy i'm gonna start making marks on the canvas and i'm gonna add even more water as i go I'm using this Freestyle paintbrush by Liquitex. It's super thin and also very large. It's four inches to have big sweeping motions like this. And the reason that this is breaking the rules is because as far as I know on Liquitex uh, website for instance because these are Liquitex paints they say not to dilute the paint for more than a certain percentage I think it's something around 25% or 50% max in order to prevent having the binder the polymer binder of acrylic paint be compromised so that the paint will adhere on the canvas properly and not cause any problems while drawing. So I've never diluted acrylic like this to this extent before. So I can't say if the potential problems could be... Sorry, I got lost in a mark here could be uh, peeling, cracking, fading pigment. I, I don't know. I've never tried this before. But in this technique, those rules don't apply. You just dilute it, you create puddles, and you keep going. So I'm curious to see how it feels once it's dried. And this is not a specifically treated surface for being extremely absorbent. Um, if I were to use like a thick watercolor paper, being able to take those kinds of washes i could understand but using a canvas prime with gesso gesso is supposed to make a canvas more waterproof in a way like seal the the pores of the fabric so that's why this is in theory breaking the rules but a bunch of artists do this and it works for them let's see how it works for me this also involves because there's so much water involved that it requires patience and the canvas can't be done in one go obviously you play around with the puddles and then you let things dry and because there's 
going to be pooling in different variations of, of thickness of pigment throughout the, the canvas. Once it dries, it's going to look very, very different than what it looks like now. So as it dries, I'll adjust the level of opacity in certain sections. I'm going to go in with a more neutral tone, like a pale gray, and see how this So here I have a, a thicker layer. And I'm gonna push it into this grain. Now I'm gonna add water here. And I'm keeping it thick in this area a little bit more and I'm gonna bring in this thinner layer into the grain. Like here, there's a big puddle. So um, as this is my first time using this technique, I don't quite know if I should like absorb, take a little paper towel and absorb some of this stuff right now. Hmm, I don't know. Just don't know. I'm tempted to go inside of this green here and adding colors, but I think that would be a mistake. I think I have to be patient, let things dry, thicken this green mass to a color that I want, like in areas that I want it to be more opaque. But there's this other technique. Before I let it dry a little bit, I want to try this other technique. A lot of this process involves mixed media. So there's no rules. And I've seen artists use oil pastel at this stage like this. So I'm gonna go in and create marks here. And from everything that I know, and I've been telling people about oil pastel, you're supposed to never put oil pastel under anything and put something on top of oil pastel. You're supposed to let everything dry completely and then put oil pastel on top as a very last layer. So this definitely breaks all the rules. I'm going with oil pastel into something super wet. So my logical brain or instinct is telling me that because oil pastel is oily, by digging into this acrylic uh, diluted solution, I'm actually, uh, once it dries, it's going to probably pull away from all the places that I dye into it. And it's going to leave marks as it dries, marks of oil pastel as it dries. And that's why some artists like to use oil pastel and dig into this like this because it creates, it leaves a, a mark that is unique. As far as conserving the artwork, once it's done, I'll be able to tell a little bit more later, but it's interesting, I'm interested. And another thing that I wanted to try was again to leave marks on the canvas, but with colored pencils or with a regular pencil as well. So this is not as unusual. Um, it's going to leave subtle marks, especially when you go in the wet bits on a canvas. It's going to make its mark as well. It's not a traditional way to use colored pencil on canvas, but let's try it. I'm trying to see where I could put a little bit of yellow here. And as you see, I'm really, I'm digging into the puddles, going in the dry bits. Oh, 
All right. Now I'm going to stop. Let this first layer dry. Gonna let this first layer dry and come back to it. It's fun. If nothing else, this is really, really fun. The painting is fully dried now and it looks a lot different. I'm really liking certain areas of it, especially this area. You see that once the puddle of water dried, it created these cells and also a bunch of nice transparencies. The plan now is to keep working on the composition and also cover some areas that I don't particularly like especially this gray area. This doesn't look intentional. That's because it's not. It's quite random actually, but it looks like a little bit dirty and muddy. So I'm going to cover some bits. I'm going to add some other bits, maybe introduce a little bit more color. I'll let you look at the process and then we'll talk about it. I'll share my thoughts and my conclusions on breaking all the rules. Let's paint. I've worked quite a bit on the painting. I want to talk about composition at the end. First, I want to talk about the mediums that I use and the technique. Oil pastel. I was super surprised at how resistant oil pastel was on the canvas, considering that I added acrylic on top of oil pastel, considering that I dug into the puddles of water. What happened basically is that a bunch of pigment got stuck to the oil pastel, creating a very distinctive texture. And when I tried to scratch it away, it's not really easy to remove. 
granted it's oil pastel so it's not foolproof it will scratch away if you work hard at it but it's arguably more resistant than if i had just put oil pastel as a last layer which is surprising i wouldn't use this technique for a realistic super figurative a way of working but with more expressive and abstract kind of works it's making me think that I have to be a lot less precious about the rules of the materials that I'm using I think for me at least the puddles the acrylic pour of really liquefied acrylic um, paint that was the most surprising to me I don't know what I was expecting I guess I thought that as it dried because there was so much water, instead of being absorbed and creating what it created, it would create like a scaly pigment that could easily be chipped away. But it really didn't do that. The canvas, even primed with gesso, can take a lot of water and it really create a staining effect with translucent transparencies and it looks like watercolor honestly there's a lot of randomness to it which is amazing and unpredictable and surprising i like it it's not so great if you're trying to render something figuratively but for expressive and abstract for me it's really cool having worked with this technique for a while now if you look at the acrylic pores very closely you can see that the canvas is stained it's not rubbing off. I tried my hardest to rub it off, to scratch it away, and it really doesn't scratch away. Obviously, the key here for me is to varnish this canvas really well with like maybe a couple coats of varnishes so that it's very well protected, specifically from UVs. So if this canvas was in front in an area where there would be a lot of sun rays constantly, on it i'm assuming that the paler the more diffuse um, areas on the canvas where there's acrylic could potentially fade but with a protective layer of varnish i think it would be completely fine i really tried to rub it off and it doesn't come off obviously this applies for the first few layers only because at some point when there's enough acrylic on the canvas and it becomes like a thick plasticky film I don't think that a super diluted version of acrylic would hold as much but for the first few layers the canvas is very absorbent and it really stains it in a nice interesting way and it's making me want to try it with ink washes you know my florals uh, my black and white florals that I've done on a watercolor paper with inks I think I want to try it on canvas it might actually work we'll see i'm gonna try ink washes on canvas see how it behaves the specific painting is going to be an ongoing process for me after you saw it finished i kept working on it off camera a lot because there was areas that i didn't really like i'm going to show you the composition of what you saw previously didn't really quite work with me it was way too busy I removed most of this section here that I didn't like and I added this. I removed this entire section with some white paint, created an interesting te uh, texture over here and I reworked all this bit here inside this main um, shape and I really, really like what I've got here. I think it's a really great starting point and I have to rework this area a little bit. I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with it at this point, but I'm very, very satisfied with what I have so far. And because I'm not super experienced with pure abstract work, I guess it takes me longer to figure out what works and what doesn't, which is totally fine. I enjoy the process. I enjoy the randomness, the surprise, and the back and forth. So I'm gonna keep working at it, which brings me to the point of the pores the acrylic pores because there's a lot of water puddles you have to obviously work on a flat surface you can't work on um, an easel and also i would probably work in multiples if i wanted to explore specific 
types of textures, compositions, or a specific color palette in a series of painting, I would probably work kind of like in a chain of starting a whole bunch of canvases at once, letting them dry, and then working a little bit on one, putting it to dry, keep working on the other, instead of having that one piece trying to finalize it, then moving on to the next. I think by doing that in stages of like, let's say eight paintings get their first layer, I think it would be interesting to have uniformity throughout the series because the mixes of paints at each, uh, at each um, steps of the way would be uh, uniformly would be the same kind of mix of paints and also the concept of iteration where I would put one layer on one painting go on to the next first layer and adapt and modify from one to the next I think it could be helpful to learn faster create more uniformity I've never done it like that before but I think that because there's so much water involved and you need to wait for it to dry uh, 24 hours to be able to continue the painting, it would force me to work on multiples and also take a step back, not rush it, have time to think about the painting, let it breathe, come back to it because I have a tendency to want to finalize my project in one or two sittings you know this forces me to take a step back let it go let it breathe come back to it I think it's interesting that way that's what I'm doing with this one I'm gonna let it sit for a week or two or whatever or whenever I want to I get an idea for what I want on that left side I'm gonna add to it and we'll see how it evolves if you're more experienced than me on this technique and you have tips, recommendations and things to share, please share because I'm sure I haven't mentioned everything. It was my first time trying it, but share the knowledge. I'm curious. If you'd like more inspiration, you can go watch this one next and I will see you in just a few days for another one. Thanks for watching. Bye.